Hey, what's up everybody? Let's talk about stacks. So recently I've been talking quite a bit about data structures. One reason is that this year I taught data structures and algorithms for the first time, which was a change of pace and actually a lot of fun. It was fun to, it's just fun to do something new. And of course, while I'm doing something new, why not make some videos about it? And speaking of cool new stuff, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be offering a new online course sometime later on in the summer. I'm really excited about it. More info at the end of the video. But first back to stacks. So a stack is just a simple linear data structure. It's one of the first that you learn about when you take a data structures class. And it's also a great one because it allows us to talk about things like encapsulation, which we're going to do later on in this video. And that's because we can build a stack in a few different ways and we're gonna talk about that. As always, source code is available through Patreon and a big thanks to all of you that help support this channel. I really appreciate it. Now stacks. The idea behind a stack is simple. It's a stack. It, just like a stack of books or a stack of plates or a stack of anything, you just have one on top of the other. And when we're talking about the data structure, a stack can only be accessed at one end and that is the top. So if we're thinking about this like a stack of books, you can think of it as, well, it's like a stack of books, but if you wanna get to the books on the bottom, you have to first do something about the books on top. You have to remove them one at a time off the top before you can get to the ones at the bottom. In real life, of course, I know you can just like dump them and like pull stuff out of the middle, but not in data structure stacks. In a stack data structure, we have two operations we can perform. We have push and we have pop. So push adds an element to the top of the stack, pop removes an element from the top of the stack, and that's really all that you can do with a stack. You push stuff on, you pop stuff off. And so today I wanna to show you how to implement a stack in C in two different ways, one with an array and one with a linked list. So arrays first. So first let's start by declaring our array. For this example, I'm going to use a stack of integers. I could use any type really. I could use floats, structs, whatever I want. There's nothing special about integers here. That's just what I'm going to use. And let's go with an array size of five. Now this is important. If we're building a stack from an array, the length of the array determines how tall or how deep the stack can be. We can't push six integers onto our stack if the maximum depth is five. If we do, we're gonna end up overflowing our stack and that's generally not a good thing. So we also need an integer variable that's going to help keep track of the top of the stack. We're gonna start that at negative one, which is just gonna mean that our stack is empty. So just for readability, let's go back up and pound define it to be empty. And then we're gonna implement push and pop. Let's start with push. Let's have it take an integer. That's the thing we're pushing onto the stack. And we're gonna have it return a Boolean. And that's going to be true if we successfully pushed something and false if we were unable to push it because the stack was full. So first we're gonna check and see if our stack is full. And it's gonna be full if the top of the stack reaches the last element of the array. So you remember it started at negative one. We're gonna keep filling up this array. And when we reach the end of the array, well, our stack is full. So if it does, then we're going to return false. And then let's change our return type to Boolean. And then if it's not full, okay, so here's when we can actually push something onto the stack. Then pushing is easy. We're just going to increment our top variable. So we're gonna slide it up one. And this in the array is where our new value is gonna end up. Okay, so then, then we store the thing, the value we wanna push at, at this new top location of the array, the location on top, this new, area pointed to by top, and we return true because we successfully pushed something onto our stack. Now we need a pop function. Pop is going to remove the top element from the stack if there is one and return it back to the caller. So with push, you remember we had to check to see if the stack was full because that's the condition where we couldn't increase it anymore. Now we're gonna check the opposite. We're trying to remove something from the stack. So instead we have a check to see if it's empty because if it's empty, we can't remove anything from the stack. And so we put this check in here and here we have a decision to make. If it's empty, we need to return something. So how do we wanna notify the caller that the stack is empty? So we're already returning an int and this is the int that we're receiving from the stack, the thing we're popping off. Now, the challenge is, is that how do we know if we're getting back an int or if we're getting back something saying, hey, well, I couldn't get anything. If we know that all the integers on our stack are going to be positive, for example, we could use a negative one and that would say, hey, hey, negative one is not a valid thing to be on the stack so we could use negative one as an error case. In this case, I'm going to use int min. That's going to be the smallest integer that you can possibly represent. So for this example, I'm assuming that int min will never be pushed on my stack. If this isn't acceptable, then there are other options. Like we could return a struct that includes an error flag. Of course, if we're using Java, C++, Ruby, or some other language that has exceptions, we could just throw an exception if that happens. So we do have some different options, but for today, this is going to do. 
So if our stack is empty, we're going to return int min. And for better readability, I'm going to pound define that to stack empty. OK, that's great. And then back down here and pop, if it's not empty, then we save the value that is on top of the stack. And then we move the top of the stack down by one. So we're adjusting it down. We're not actually removing the element that we popped off. We're just moving the top down. So the next time we push, it's going to replace that one. It'll be just put on top of where the one we just removed. And then we return that thing that we just saved. And yes, I know I could do this without declaring a separate variable. Some of you, I'm sure, are going to point that out. But I'm doing it this way because I want to make sure it's clear to everyone who's watching this what I'm doing here. And really, that's it for push and pop. See, I told you stacks were simple. Now, just to make sure, let's go down in main and let's test things out a little bit. We're going to push a few numbers onto our stack. Then we're going to pop one. And we'll print it out. And when we run this, it should be the last one we just pushed. Actually, OK, on second thought, let's make a loop that's going to pop off all the numbers in the stack. That way we can really check to see if this works. So it's going to just basically pop all the numbers that we had pushed onto the stack off until we reach the bottom when the stack is empty. So if we did everything correctly, that should print out all of our numbers in the reverse order that we pushed them. A stack gives you last in, first out behavior. We compile it, and we run it, and you can see that we get our numbers printed out in reverse just the way we expected to. So that's our array version. We'll come back to this code shortly, but now let's just make the linked list version. Now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with linked lists. If not, I have a video you should watch. I put a link in the description below. You might want to pause this one, watch that one, and then come back. OK, we're good? OK, let's go. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy over the array-based code that we just wrote, and we're going to work from there. So first off, we need to define our node struct. It's just an integer. That's our value that we want to add to the list. And the next pointer, that's going to point to the next element in the list. We're going to declare our head pointer. That's just a pointer to a node, just like in any other linked list. So that's going to be the front of the list or the top of our stack. Of course, we no longer need an integer to track the depth of the, depth of the stack, so we remove that. And let's set our head to null just to start things off with an empty list. And now I'm going to define my push function and pop functions. And they're actually going to look a lot like the last example. The logic is roughly the same, just the implementation is a little different. One thing that's different is in push, we don't need to check to see if the stack is full, because it's a linked list. So it can just keep growing forever, or at least until we run out of memory. And here, instead, we're just going to allocate a new node for the list. I guess it is possible for malloc to fail if our stack gets too big, so let's check for that and return false if we're out of memory. Then we set the value to be this integer that we passed in, and then we add it to the front of the list by setting its next pointer to point to head, which is the top of the list. And then we update head so that it now points to the new node, the new top of the stack. And we return true, and now we're done with push. So with pop, we are going to check to see if the list is empty again, in this case, we simply check to see if the head points to null. That would mean we're empty. And if so, then we're going to return stack empty just like we did before. Otherwise, we're going to save the value at the top of the stack. Now by grabbing the value of the top node. We're going to save a pointer to the head. We're updating the head, moving the pointer down to the next element of the list. And then we free the node that was at the top. And then main stays pretty much exactly the same as it was before. And we compile that one, and ah, and we forgot standard lib.h. So now we compile it, and we run it, and you can see that we got the same result. So now our implementation works, but it's not great. The main issue is that our push and our pop are working on a single global stack. So a single global array or a single global linked list. But what if I want three different stacks? What if I want 12 different stacks or 100 different stacks? We'll stick to three for now. But this isn't going to work. Because push and pop right now are always modifying the same global stack. They just work with one stack. So this isn't going to be all that useful. We want to generalize this code a bit. So to do this, let's first think about what we need for each stack. In the linked list case, I just need a pointer to the head of the list. So let's type def a pointer, and now we're going to call that stack. Basically, this is just what I'm calling a stack in this program. And now we can remove the global head pointer because we're not going to have just one global list. 
And now we just need to change push and pop so that we pass a stack into the function so the function knows what stack we want to push to or pop from. Notice that we pass in a pointer to the stack. That allows us to change the stack, to change that head pointer, and that change is going to persist outside of the function. So that's really important. And we need to then change the specific stack we're pushing and popping. Basically, we're just removing all of the references to head and replacing it with the stack we pass in as an argument. And now we have a more generalized solution. So I'm going to come down to main. We're going to just update that. Let's create a bunch of stacks like this. Let's set them all to null to start out. And let's change main to have these pushes apply to different stacks and the pop as well. And now I only have one element on each stack, so that's not very interesting. So let's add a few more to S2. And now we can compile our code and we can run it and you see again that all things are working. So cool. Now I'm going to quickly jump over and do the same thing to my array version. Over here, I'm basically doing the exact same thing. Instead of a single pointer, a stack here needs two things. So it needs an array and a top. So let's make a struct with these two things and then we'll type def that to be a stack. And then we do what we did in the last example. For both push and pop, we're going to just pass in the stack and then update the code so that it modifies the stack we passed in rather than a single global stack. Now, I don't really like this my stack, my stack business, so let's change the array to be named something else. How about values? That works. And this is the part of the video where I couldn't decide how to handle my pointers, and I just messed around for a while, so I'm speeding through this. Now we can come down here in main and make the same changes that we made before. And if we compile it, okay, uh, that didn't quite work. I missed a few places where I need to update top. Sorry about that. Let's fix that. And now we compile it and run it. And we get an extra zero at the bottom because I forgot to initialize the stacks properly. Now, it would be awesome if I could come up here and initialize the variables in the struct. If we were using C++, Java, or Ruby, or any other language with objects, we would just put this in a constructor. But this is C, folks. So for now, let's just initialize this down here in main. Now, folks, this is a good time to talk about encapsulation. If you look at these two examples, you notice that I made a point to keep the code in main that calls push and pop basically identical. And we could and we probably should add a stack init function to both versions that will basically make initializing the stack look identical as well. Then in both examples, the main code would be identical. And it wouldn't have to matter whether we're using a linked list or whether we're using an array. Main just wouldn't care. Now, of course, that may not always be true because you remember that our array stack is pretty space limited. Right now, it only has room for five elements but we could make it bigger. We could make it big enough that it doesn't really matter, that you never run out of space. And at that point, then main really doesn't care. All it needs is something that it can push to and pop from, and it doesn't care how you actually implemented it. It just needs to behave like a stack. Now, this is the core principle behind encapsulation. As software developers, you're always trying to package your code into modules, components, or useful chunks in such a way that the outside code, the code that uses those chunks, doesn't know or care what's going on inside. Now, why is that a good thing? Well, it's a great thing because it gives you flexibility. It allows us to change the inner workings of a module or a component without impacting the rest of the program. So it allows us to limit the impact of code changes. So that just makes our code a whole lot easier to maintain. Now, of course, at this point, we could talk about how C doesn't really do a great job of encapsulation and that this is where object-oriented programming languages like C++, Java, Ruby, Python, this is where they really shine. So of course, let me know if you would like to see more about stacks and encapsulation or other data structures in one of those languages, just comment below. But instead, really quick today, I just wanna to talk about the course that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Because let's face it, everything right now is a little bit weird. I'm trying to figure out what my fall is gonna look like. My kids are getting ready for their first year at university and they're trying to figure out what their fall semester is gonna look like. I'm sure it's just weird for everybody. 
So with all this uncertainty, my daughters and I got talking and we decided to take some of the stuff that we've been studying in preparation for them to go off to the university and actually package it up into a class that we could make available to more of you. Specifically focusing on beginner students who may be feeling a little uncertain or maybe, maybe you're in your first year, you've done a little bit of programming, you're not really feeling secure with your programming abilities, you're feeling like maybe things are a little harder than they ought to be and are looking for some more help to build a really strong foundation and become the programmer that you wanna be. So this will be a hybrid video and interactive online course. Space will be limited. More details will be coming out soon. But if you're interested, if you think this could help you or a friend or somebody you know, then please check out the mailing list at this URL. Put a link in the description as well. Go sign up for the list and then we'll let you know as details become available. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, subscribe if you don't wanna miss the next one. I do have a few more data structure videos planned for the coming weeks. Of course, as always, comment below and let me know what you'd like to see more of on this channel. And until then, I'll see you later.